Welcome to my happy place. Oh, so can let me show you around. Wipe your feet before you oh. come in. Okay. You don't want to get the snow in. Just kidding, I'm not that type A. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know if you can see with the sun and everything. Um, so we decided when we were building this barn that we wanted to be able to come in and do everything that we needed to do without fighting with the animals. So this is what we call the human area. This is where we feed and milk. This is where we keep the feed so they don't have access to it. Um, our process is like all of our girls live there and we bring them out to do graining and milk and then they leave that way. So it's an in-out system and it works well for us so that uh, we're not fighting to put girls back in while the other ones are pushing their way out. So, so they this come, is what we call gen pop. So they come in through this door here. They come out. Out or out. Yep. And then we they feed them on the milk stand, feed, finish, and then, and then and out the to hour. the paddock. And we upgraded to these doors, obviously. This, yeah, uh, these were, I definitely push for these ones because I wanted airflow in the summertime, but I wanted them to, I wanted the barn to look like a barn. And I mean, what's more barn than, you know, Dutch doors with, you know? Right. So, Correct. Um, size of the barn, I don't remember, uh, 24 by 40. 40. And yeah, then... Yeah, we added a porch, a covered porch onto the front um, so that the girls would have some shade in the summertime and cover from the snow. The last thing I wanted to do working at a horse place for years was to shovel snow out from in front of their doors. Let's head out that way. Yeah. So this is our covered porch area. Um, full length of the barn, all full 40 length feet. Of the barn, yep. So and it has like our, this is our human door, like we were saying, and then that's the goat's door down there. And like like we said, it snowed yesterday, and I don't have to shovel to let the girls out. We could get a couple feet of snow, and I can still just come out here in the morning, let the girls out, and little princess hooves if they don't like the snow have a nice dry area to walk. It also helps in the summertime when it rains or when it's really hot, this area stays nice and cool. And for those of you looking at this video thinking of designing your own barn, what I might do is actually close in this wall about halfway, because that'll stop me from having to shovel this back corner when we get really big snowstorms. Sometimes it does come in, and if I was to shut that wall off, it would give them a little more of a yeah, enclosure. Yeah, the wind very rarely comes but, from this side because I believe that side's north. Uh, yeah, yes. that's south, that's north. So yep. the winds very rarely come from the north. Um, but we highly recommend the covered porch. I mean, absolutely. it's the best. The the Dutch doors, the covered porch. I could have even done without these windows, but I mean, they I like the windows. They help. Then it, when I'm filling grain and I could actually peek into the chickens and see what's but, going but on at the But how long did the screens last on the windows? About 35 seconds. Yes, exactly. So forget the screens. I don't open the we, windows. They never open. Not, I mean, I'd love to be able to, but their grain is on the other side. And that's kind of a, you know, I hope we never have an issue with it, but. And having their water outside the covered porch is also a pretty good, uh, idea just easy to get to in rain snow you know it's a this is their second water trough they have one inside as well we'll show you the we'll go to uh, gen pop now and how well, how we set up their hay feeder and everything um but this is nice because again it's their second one and they can drink it without really being exposed to a lot of the elements all right let's head over to gen pop okay. so we do close them in at night um, and that's really just to protect them from any kind of critter that could jump over this fence or dig under it and pose a, a risk to them. And I sleep better at night knowing that everybody's locked in safe. Um, but this is their hay feeder. We have 11 girls. We have two hay feeders, but this is the largest one that they really all congregate around. And for you, again, building that is about three inches bigger than a typical hay bale. It's it, basically I can load a whole hay bale inside it and then basically put a half a hay bale or another one on top. So they can almost have two full bales of hay there at one time. Yeah. Um, this is their other water trough that we currently have a heater set up to. Some hay fell in it overnight. 
And then this is our corner hay. <laughs> yeah. Technically, we have. Technically, they here. pick at the whole wall, if you can see here, which yeah. is, again is fine. But this uh, corner hay feeder works for the little goat. We retrofit this back half of the barn into two kidding pens, just kind of if a mom has already delivered, but I need one of the other kidding pens because somebody else is about to go. This is like a smaller or maybe a larger grow out area without them having access to the full barn. And how many girls do we have pregnant? Well, tomorrow we officially find out, but nobody's come back into heat and um, there's eight of them. So we'll talk about our kidding pen setup next. As she mentioned, we take this section here and divide it into two pens. We call them FEMA trailers <laughs> because we basically bring in a bunch of pallets down this line and, and then the right piece. about here into this section. So it cuts off this back corner and that back corner creates two temporary pens, FEMA trailers. And then we go down here to our kidding pen section. So before I go over to all the kidding pens running down this wall to the to the your left, I want to talk about this, this hinge. Right. Oh, yep. It's your left. The viewer's left. That's fine. This hinge right here, you see these mass, massive hinges. Right so this yeah. gen pop area behind you is um we use the deep litter method. So we clean it out about twice a year and it gets really thick and big, but it works like a compost pile, keeps the goats warm, but this whole door swings open so I can drive the tractor in to clean it out. We have a video on that. I'll link it up here so you guys can watch that too. The deep litter clean out, definitely a huge advantage. That little yeah. beam up there does kind of get in the way. I got to take all the names down, but it's no big deal. It helped yeah. a lot. I could clear out that whole thing in half a day. And when so. we had our original red barn with our first four goats in it, we spent a whole weekend, eight oh. hour days. Yeah, two days. Two days in a row cleaning out a little 12 by 20. Maybe, it wasn't even not even, it 10 by 12. Like, it was like a 10 by 12 area. I spent two days cleaning crying. it out. Crying, just yeah. like, I don't even know how we're gonna, cause it was wet and yeah. soppy, had a, it had a wood floor. So this has a dirt floor. So really if it does get wet and soggy, it soaks into the earth. We don't have a problem with really wet. I mean, this is dusty. When we, right. when we muck it out, it's not, yep. it's but not we wet, have the, so it works nice. Yep, and then we go over here into all our kidding pens and there's Four yeah, along four this down wall. this line, and we'll use them in order, kind of as the girls' due dates are coming. These pens are, ooh, what are they? They're 12 by 6-ish. Yeah, about 12 by 6, because this section of the barn is 24 wide. So yeah. they're 12 by about 6. So, and I actually like the size of this. Um, we fit a heating barrel in. I think we have a video. We have a heat barrel video. We'll link it here. We'll link that and we'll kind of show them in action. We've got a couple of videos of them being used. Um, but it's big enough for a 55 gallon drum that we use for our heating barrels in the corner and some water we put right here and feed them through this hole. And I can get in there, even like me and the vet. And oh, we've had three, three or four people can plus all be the in helping mom deliver. Yep if she needs help. Yep, and then obviously, as you see this time of year, it's uh, mid-December, we use this all as hay storage. Yeah. So we calculate basically to make sure we're almost out of hay going into yeah. kidding season, and we actually store the hay right here where you see these stands I'm standing on. We lay down a bunch of pallets and make an aisle down the middle. It's like the kids train. Store our hay, but we also put a loft down that way. We took one pen and created a loft, you can see here, which allows me to store some hay overhead. I don't want to do that all the way down because it'll block off all my natural light coming from the, uh, opaque, like, the opaque plastic we put in here to let, I really like that to let does, light in. It does allow, and we it, have it, it on that it side too. It makes it look a lot more roomier and, and airy. Yeah, so it just brings in natural light all the way around. It's a very good idea like from my designer. Hi. Um, but uh, we did put in this trough. We can fit about 50 bales of hay up there, which is a nice little when cushion. When I stack it. Yeah, okay. Um, so now we're going into the addition because when I built the barn, it wasn't big enough for some. Oh, and we can also see the hay. So size does matter. It wasn't big. This is our kidding pen four, which acts as an aisle weight into the rabbitry, which, like Aaron mentioned, was an add-on less than a year after, well, it was about a year after we started talking about 
We need more room for a rabbitry. So this section right here was an outside wall at one point. We took the outside wall off. You can see some of the outside molding still left on and we expanded. We basically rebuilt that outdoor porch that you saw on the other side all the way down. Same exact design, but in this side closed it all in. Opaque on the top half. Um, and that's pretty much it. Two more windows down on this end, which we do use. We do open those windows and, uh, these windows though, because we're facing like east in the, in the morning when you're doing far, the chores, you're blinded. Yeah. But like right now in this video shot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like I said, this is the 40, 40 foot length, just like the porch outside for the goats. And we've got, Oh, I never like to count 30 something. Let's just say 30 something. I don't think we have 30 rabbits. It could be 25 holes oh. as far as cages go, how much room we have. Um, and then we've got two additional kidding pens, which are much longer than our other ones. But now we've turned one of them into a rabbit colony for our Flemish giants who look like they're trying to make babies over there. And then more hay storage. More hay oh, storage and then here. Show them one of the 55 gallon heating barrels. So there's some of those uh, heating barrels, which again, I have that video on how to build those. I'll link it in here. Um, and they're very necessary. We basically have eight of them, I think. I think we have, we have one for each stall. How many stalls do we have? Well, we have seven eight. stalls, but then we have FEMA trailers. Seven, so yeah, we have nine. eight. We have eight um, barrels, though. Eight. One yeah. for each mom. Yep. Because they all, our girls, I don't know how it happens every year, but all of our goats end up going into heat within like seven or eight days. Yeah. So this year, last year is even worse. We had one mom due and five days later, all of the rest of the yeah. eight were due. So in our case, we had to design our barn to be able to handle all the goats giving birth at the same time. So that's what we did. So we're going to head out to the boy area now. Adding the rabbitry actually made it really nice. We can almost get from our house to the boys with only doing about 100 feet of walking outside now. So on a really snowy, rainy day, it's not too bad. You get a little wet getting from the house to the barn, and then you get a little wet taking this walk you see here. But uh, that basically wraps up the inside tour of the barn video. Um, I don't want to turn this into a farm tour. We'll do that one later. But here's the back side of the barn. The sun's kind of blinding us. But very plain on the back side. Very simple. The outdoor to the rabbitry and the outdoor to the goats. I kind of wish we had some, some windows on this wall. But at the same time, windows and goats don't generally mix well. Um, so I'd love it for the light. But again, this is the least lit. Yeah. The sun rises over here and sets over there. So this area is always going to be dark yeah. anyway. So that wraps up the inside tour of that's my happy place. of her happy place. So in other words, that's usually where she is. It's the happy place. So thanks again for watching. Please follow, subscribe. We'll link up all those videos we mentioned that might take a couple days to do because I'm kind of slow on all that stuff. But thank you again. Bye.